Canola. An odd crop. Why, hello everyone. I'm the third gen farmer, and we're gonna go over some facts about canola. All right, so fact number one is the canola that we harvest and that we send off, uh, you may know that it gets used for canola oil. However, that's not its only use. It can be used for things like biodiesel and products in like plastics and uh, hair products, as well as once the oil is extracted from the seed, that rest of the seed can be used towards fertilizers and animal feed, which is awesome. So it's a crop that can be used for so many different things. Fact number two is with the stuff that's going on behind me. Canola, which is in our, in our tank here, is measured by the bushels, just like a bunch of other crops. Now, one bushel of canola can produce about three gallons of canola oil or about like 10 or 11 liters which is a lot of canola oil for one bushel that's pretty impressive that truck for example is about 800 bushels and that one truck is approximately almost 9,000 liters of canola oil or it can also be that would be about 2,500 gallons of canola oil just in that one truck now for our third fact since we're on the topic of oil this canola crop that's going in our combine and in our augers and everything because of the oil content that's in the seed it basically lubricates all these parts as it's going through the machines and the augers so it's nice and quiet if you can if you take all the rest of the machine sound away it's actually nice and quiet to go through any kind of machines or augers and it doesn't do much wear to the machines because of that lubrication. Now that we're on our fourth fact, speaking of four, canola's average height of growth is about four feet or some plants can even grow as tall as six feet tall, which is pretty, pretty tall. We've had canola before that's been that tall and it is a lot. That's a lot of plant from such a little seed. All right, and sliding in onto fact number five is how did canola come to be? Because it's not like every other plant. It's actually, it's quite different uh, from your typical wheat and, and stuff. Um, it's similar to like a variety of wheat or peas, but it's, Again, a little bit different. So, uh, it originates from, it's a type of oil seed, and it originates from, I don't think I can say that word on YouTube, but uh, oil seed, beep. And basically, they used uh, breeding of like crops in a field, basically kind of thing, uh, to make up, uh, using like within a lab in a field, to kind of make up the canola that we know from that other seed, kind of modifying it slightly every time. I'm just gonna turn around here one sec. Now that I'm turned around, so basically they took this and they wanted to make something a little bit better. These scientists in Canada back in like the 1970s just wanted to make something that was healthier. Because basically the plant that was there before wasn't, uh, I don't know all the science terms behind it necessarily, but basically wasn't uh, necessarily healthy for us to consume. Like it, it was okay and it wouldn't necessarily harm us, but I believe it just had a lot of fat content and a few other chemicals and stuff in it, which they wanted to get rid of. So that's how kind of canola came to be. And the idea of it, to modify it, to get it better to the needs uh, for everyone to have a better quality for canola oil and for like in cooking. Now, now it wasn't just because of this food reasons as well. Another reason is, is for weed control, they kind of could basically, since they were making this new crop in a sense, they could make it so it had, you could have better control on some weeds. 
seats and stuff, which were some big problems in the 1970s that they were having and kind of contaminating a bunch of the seed and they weren't able to get as much product. But now with this new canola, they were able to do that. All right, that was a long fact. Let's go on to something shorter. All right, fact number six, to bring it a little bit closer to uh, some of my experiences, is out of all plants and crops that I have grown, by far, canola is the smallest seed to biggest plant ratio. The seed of canola is really small. Like it is extremely small to the point where it gets caught up in your fingernails and everything, right? And can just go through the slightest little cracks. But yet the plant that it produces is almost like a mini tree. The plant, as you might have seen, maybe if you look back at some of my swathing videos, and I mean, just seeing it come into here, this is after the canola is all dried up and it's still such a big and bushy crop compared to uh, any of your other crops like wheat, barley, peas. Those are all much bigger seeds in retrospect uh, to canola. And it is quite impressive the type, the control this crop has over other uh, competition within the fields. It will choke other weeds and wheat and stuff out in the field because it is such a violent crop in a way. That's how it got it. That's kind of, it's originated from that name, which I had mentioned earlier that I can't say on YouTube, of the oil seed beep. There was a reason why they called it that. Uh, and because this is originated from that, it still has those same kind of properties, right? It would just, it just takes so much from the soil and it can take so much from other plants, especially after they kind of fine tuned it and made it so you can uh, use herbicide on top of this crop, not affect the crop and kill off the, the competitors that it wouldn't kill prior to those changes. So now with canola, this one is a fact about it's growing. So when we plant the canola into the ground, uh, it's first stage that we call it once it pops out of the ground and germinates is we kind of call it a clover stage because it looks like a four leaf clover or a three leaf clover, you know? Not as lucky, but it looks like that. Then after that, we call it a, the next stage cabbage stage. So the canola kind of branches out and um, has these big cabbage like leaves on it. Now that's very different from the crop that you can see here to a cabbage, right? So then after that is probably the stage that changes the look of it the most, I wanna say, is the bolting stage. There's this massive stem that just through the middle of that, of the, from the middle where the seed is, of that kind of cabbage leaves, all the way up shoots up, and this is where it's gonna gain its height. So it's gonna go from maybe a couple inches tall to now it's gonna be, uh, two feet, three feet, four feet tall at this point already. And that bolt is shooting up and then from that is where the flower comes. Now this is the next stage. We call it the flowering stage. That flower, that yellow flower, very distinct, comes out. A lot of people know a canola crop because of this yellow look to it. And that would be the stage where you see that. Now, as it flowers, each flower that it gets is a possible pod that it can produce. Now the pods, or the stage where it creates those pods, is where the seed will come from. So that's when it can produce its seed. It needs the most water, sunlight, and everything, nutrition, to create that seed. Which then turns into all these crops of pods. And from those crops of pods, or from all those pods, then the flowers are replaced with those pods, and inside those pods are a bunch of canola seeds, which we can come by and harvest, which we're doing right now. Now, being Canadian, this one only seems a little bit fitting to mention, but in the world, globally, the country which grows the most canola is Canada. So, just with climates and everything, um, and the fact that 
it originated, the canola seed originated up here. It seems only fitting that it is, um, but yeah, something interesting. I've lost count on what number of fact this is by now. However, either way, another one for you guys is that over 80% of the canola acres, uh, I was to be found that over 80% of canola acres are swathed like ours are here. And the rest is either just uh, let out to dry naturally or sprayed. But 80% of swath, that's still a huge percentage of farmers that swath their canola still. Side note here, the reason why we swath is to help dry down the canola a lot faster and more even um, throughout the whole plant. Now, talking about this dry down process leads us into our next fact. Canola, when it's wet and green, is extremely heavy. A lot of other plants are pretty heavy, but canola, green, and especially when it's wet, is very, very heavy, like the whole plant, I should say. Um, but as soon as it dries down to how it is like right now, it is one of the lightest crops. It is extremely light, and we consider it like paper, and like paper through the combine because it just goes in just like that and you don't even feel it um, and hear it in the combine, doesn't take much power or anything and goes in just like that. All right, and let's keep it rolling here. Uh, canola, when talking about weight, is very light, especially compared to a lot of other crops that we grow around here like wheat and peas. But for that kind of crop, it is definitely on the lighter side of things. And if it's like very dry, like it is right now, it loses weight very quickly. Compared to wheat, if you're on the drier side, it doesn't lose weight as quick as some like canola. Most likely to do with the fact of how small the seed is uh, and all that water content is just that much more critical to its weight so I mean we're we're we were combining over there now we're combining here um, but besides the point this is a video about facts and here is another one now you might you might notice that our canola sauce are going this way I hope you notice that one but canola sauce are going this way but what significance does that have well this field if I can get it to is a very long field this way. So why would we make it so we have to turn twice as much and go on the shorter way? Well, the reason behind that is because we did our, we wanted to do our swathing east to west. So the swaths right now are running east to west because of the fact that, I mean, this isn't necessarily about canola, but it's to do with canola, uh, because of the fact that uh, the wind always comes from the east or the west, or 95% of the time. It comes from the east or the west, where we are. Uh, because of this reason, if we have the swaths running that way, they won't blow around. But if we put them the other way, that wind is gonna push and pull those swaths as they dry, like I mentioned, they're very light. So it's gonna start pulling the canola and making a mess all on the field, and then the swaths won't be in their nice rows. So hopefully you enjoyed all those kind of facts and everything uh, about canola. Um, hopefully that might have helped to kind of understand more about this funky looking uh, weird growing crop uh, with a bunch of interesting things. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I might be able to answer them uh, or kind of point you in the right direction kind of thing. Uh, but feel free to answer them or to ask them because uh, worst case scenario I don't know but uh, best case scenario I do and I can answer it and then boom you find out more even more about it but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and uh, you have yourselves a good one